Hey, everybody. Yes, okay. So look, you got me in mid-chew because I got up super early this morning. I didn't have eaten a thing. So I had to like pull something together and chew it all down. But I'm really excited about today because, you know, sometimes you see me and you'll see me doing tutorials on um, Zoom. But when I have a special guest, I'm on StreamYard, which I love. So I am broadcasting today um, through Facebook Live and YouTube, my YouTube channel. I'm trying to do better with my YouTube channel, y'all. Pray for me. <laughs> but I'm really excited because you guys get to treat. You getting the treat today. You get to meet Miss Camilla, who is also known as Miss Hair and Humor, who is also AKA my new friend that I love that cracks me up all the time. She's so hilarious. And she is an amazing braider. She specializes in protective styling and really healthy hair care. So I'm excited. I'm going to bring her in. I see that you guys are here. Hey, Angie B. Y'all give me a thumbs up or a hey, a hi, a ho or something. Let me know you in the house. And um, you get to ask her questions because we're going to talk about everything. Protective styling, some of the best uh, styles to keep, especially during summertime and on quarantine, as well as when to take them down so that you can keep your edges. You know, I'm all about those edges. I'm always talking about edges. So anyway, let me bring in my friend. Hey. Hi. Can you hear me? Oh, yeah. Okay. Hi. Mm -hmm. And you look good, too. You know, I had the, I got a small throw now, so I got a little fluff. Just a little I like bit. it. Thank you, thank it's you, thank you. Hi. Happy Saturday. Um, yes, and welcome. Um. There's a little feedback. I don't know why. Oh, let me see. Does this change it? Hello, hello. Is let me see. Yeah, I think. Uh, well, I still hear it a little bit. No, it's getting better. It's getting better. Let me know because I had you in a box. I had to, I had to make a makeshift <laughs> place to put the phone. Is it still put me in a box. I put you in a box. I put you in a box. <laughs> I think we're good. I think um, I hear just a little bit, but it's not bad. Okay. Um, girl. Yes. There's so much to talk about. I, and, know. I mean, I don't know where to start with you. <laughs> you can start how we met in Paris because Paris, okay. is, everything that says has Paris in it is good. I mean, <laughs> okay. Well, first of all, thank you for always being a big up in the brush. That's one thing. Listen. I mean, I, if I'm lying, I'm flying. That brush. <laughs> I just Thank gave, you. I'm in New Jersey visiting my best friend. I just gave her one of the minis. Oh. Um, like, you need this brush. Yeah. Right to you. Literally. Thank you. Thank you. What's happening, Brenda Bridge and Nadine and Tamika? And I see Ashley, Mia, Tamika, Mitzi. What's up, Mitzi? Um, I can't go all the way up. Short sister girl. I always like to shout out the people that show up. Yeah, yeah. The writer, uh, Trapina. Yeah, because they, they make it. They make it. Mm -hmm. Saturday, they do with me. So I, I'm thinking, do you guys hear any of the feedback? I mean, maybe it's just my phone. Weird. It's like a kickback. That's so weird. Because now I'm... Usually that happens when the phone is resting on something, but I'm holding it now. I don't know. And maybe it's me. Yeah, I only hear it when I talk and I hear it come back. Oh. You have your earphone? No. I don't okay, have don't your earphone. We're not going to wear it. Okay. So you tell them about Paris and then I'll chime in. So <laughs> I was in Paris. <laughs> because Tell me if you get an echo. I'm going to put you down now. Is the echo there? It's not from you. It's when I talk. It's a little okay. weird thing. Some okay. people hear it. Okay. And I don't know how to. How to do it. Okay. So I was in Paris because it was the end of the Madonna Madame X tour. And I was the braider, not one mm -hmm. of 
the braiders. I was the braider for the tour. Get it tell. And I was on tour for eight months. And I, I can't remember if you DM'd me or I DM'd you, but basically we connected like, I think you did because you were there also doing work with yes. your client. And then you said, hey, do you want to link up? And I'm like, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. everything else can wait and so so yeah it was like a highlight within a highlight for me to actually meet you because I was talking about the brush and tagging things without ever knowing you or meeting you I, I was just I don't know who Felicia is but this brush and so when we met it was like ah, like meeting my future self I'm like you just a casual badass like just that's how I want to be casual like but this. badass like well, that's just <laughs> mellow, <laughs> mellow with it. Thank you. Oh, so, yeah. So that's why I was in Paris because I was working. And then I just so happened to meet one of my fellow stylist heroes. We had a, a funny, wonderful day walking around Paris mm -hmm. uh, and eating pizza. We ate, we ate, we ate a lot well, of pizza. We had bread. so much bread. We had a lot of bread, a lot of cheese, y'all. Um, a lot of champagne. A lot of champagne. It was a good day. And that was right before quarantine hit us. <laughs> That's why I said, saying when when I asked people, what was the last thing you did before quarantine? And I'm like, I was in Paris. I mean, where were you? I don't know. I was in Paris. <laughs> I, I don't know about anybody else. <laughs> oh, my God. Thank you guys so much for the love on the brush. I see you um, shouting it out. I'm very grateful for that. Yeah, so... Miss Karen Humor. Yes. I went on your page and I was blown away because your braiding style is so I don't know if you guys really pay attention to braids, but there's a different type of braider when every single row, every single braid looks the same. It's just like a map, like a just hurt. Thank you. Yeah. It's, it's, yeah, so your work is impeccable. Thank you, thank and you. I didn't even know I used to be a braider, and I don't think I knew all the hair can people even explore with braids. And I see you do it all the time. So how do you come up with the hair style? It's well, most of it is like, for example, my signature. There's a signature bun that I do with the braids. It's like a messy bun, but truly only I can do it because my clients. I teach them, and then they're like. I, I can't do this. It's really taking something that exists, what everybody does, and remixing it and making it my own, in a sense. Yeah. And from doing that, repeat, like literally repeatedly and building excitement around it, people want more of it. And so, I don't know, that's, that's just, it just kind of domino effect. You mm -hmm. just keep going from that. It's like, hmm, I'm onto something here. Yeah, because I think with braids, sometimes, you know, you figure you do a few little hairstyles and that's it. Mm -hmm. But I have seen you, even with braid ponytails, mm -hmm. you, I don't even know. That was on tour. Yeah. No. You know what? It was the dancer that thought of that. She, she came to me and she said, we had a day off. And she said, I want, I want to braid and I know you're tired of us braiding. <laughs> I'm tired of us braiding our hair. And I was like, mm -hmm. yeah. So she was like, so can I just get one long to the floor one? I said, now one braid I can do. And she said, but then it has to be dramatic. So that was how, and I think you, all, I remember when you told me that you were like that one long braid, it got so much love. It was just one seamless long braid. And she, as a dancer, she just, she was whipping. She loved it. She loved it. Amazing. But then, so for you, you don't wear your hair in braids a lot, did you? Growing up, like, how did you even get into braiding? So, your braid. so I, funny enough, never wore box braids <laughs> ever. It's truly a love. I just love doing it. So at an early age, my dad taught me how to braid. I tell the story a lot. My dad taught me how to braid. He was a Boy Scout in Trinidad. And, you know, Boy Scouts learn different ways to tie ropes, I guess, for survival. I don't even know why. they. <laughs> I don't know. And braiding or plaiting was one of the techniques. Fast forward, he has this child who I just always been drawn to hair. And mm -hmm. one day I took my doll head and I was like, look, dad, I braided. And he was like, that's 
it's not a braid. <laughs> Come sit down and get this. Let me give you this free game. And so he literally in that moment taught me how to braid. And it was literally magical because I was like, now I can do that thing that I see. And so I braided everybody. I braided my, my grandmother. I braided cousins. I That really began my I obsession. It. it was an obsession. Oh and my so goodness. it literally just carried on. So I didn't care about seeing it on me because if it's on me, I can't see it. I can't go, mm -hmm. I did that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so then I just started focusing on giving away my gift, basically. I love it. This is good. Mm -hmm. So I feel like, you know, one of the things or the one of the other things we need to talk about, how long do you even keep braids in? I know what I think. But what what do you what do you really see people doing in terms of like the length of when they wear these braids? So, okay, I discussed this in my ebook, Beyond the Braids. This was for my clients, for the people. Beyond the Braids is available on my website. Um, however, there was a question that kept coming up when I had appointments. The clients would always ask me in my DM and everywhere. So how long can I keep this in? And then I would correct them. I said, it's not about how long you can. You can keep it in because my braid will stay neat, stay intact. You know, through wear and tear, you'll get fuzz. But the more important question is, what is the suggested time frame? I suggest <laughs> six weeks. Yes. Next. Like out mm -hmm. of my mouth, I tell my clients, you have six strong weeks of mm -hmm. proper maintenance. Mm -hmm to keep your protective styles in. Mm -hmm. What you do beyond the six weeks is at your risk. But out of my mouth, you will never hear me say, girl, you could do two months, you could do three months. Suggested, you know how they say surgeons general warning? <laughs> like the braider natural hair stylist warning is that if you go past the six weeks, especially if you're neglecting your hair, you're entering a danger zone. And that's why there's so much neglect buildup hair issues and people bl blame the braids. They're like, braids took my hair out. No, no, no. Yeah. Improper at-home maintenance <laughs> took your braids out. Tell them. Don't blame the braids. Don't blame Don't the braids. Blame the braids. <laughs> Don't blame the braids. That's no. what, I mean, people need to know that because I think they feel, they kind of just forget about their hair when it gets their hair braids. Mm -hmm. And when that happens, and all the damage goes down, then they come to me and be like, hey, I need help. Yep. Bring the edges back in his hair. And I'm like, what happened? Oh, uh, I have, they try to blame braids. Yes. I have braids. <laughs> you know, I got my hair braided. I said, okay. And what? Well, I mean, you know, it was, tight. well, how long did you keep it in? Eight weeks. Wait, girl, wait. So it's tight, but you kept it in eight weeks. Right. So okay. sometimes it is the braider. Let let's let me not say that. Sometimes um the old school techniques of I know how to grip hair. I mm. I hate that. The gripping, nothing about when you grip something sounds good. Mm -hmm. I gripped my child. I gripped my shirt. Like grip is not a a tender word. So to grip hair, I look at it the same way. A, a stylist's ability to grip your hair is not a is not a skill to brag about. Like your hair should be treated the way you want to be treated with love gently, you know, like when I'm putting, when I'm doing my install and I only focus on knotless braids, but when I'm doing my install, mm -hmm. I have music playing. There's a breeze blowing. Mm -hmm. I'm dating my clients. I'm like, how you doing today? You see how long my fingers are, Felicia? I'm all in their head. Like you good. Let's talk about it. <laughs> and so they're like, oh, this is not this is not the normal experience. And so, yeah, there's nothing, nothing is being gripped during my appointment. I'm, I'm holding, I'm installing, you know, and words yeah. like that. I'm, yeah, I'm nurturing words <laughs> like that matter. Like, you know, mm -hmm. and that's why, that's why on, on my books were getting busier because it, it started to become this experience that people would talk about. And they sure. were like, she's doing the same braid. Braiding is a teachable skill, but it's about everything around it. That yeah. makes a difference. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's so true. Mm -hmm. I grew up very tender headed. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's bad. You know, mm -hmm. you look at my hair, it's, it's like it's out. Yeah. Like, <laughs> you look at it. 
No, you look at it like, okay. <laughs> so what, what I did was I empowered myself by learning how to do my own hair. Mm -hmm. So I started doing my hair when I was, maybe I was like 11 years old, something like that. And with hair, like adding hair in. Mm -hmm. And I remember learning how to be firm, but not tight. You know? Like the hair, it was in there. Absolutely. But it didn't need to be ripping up all the brain uh, 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 vessels. Up. Secure, but not stressful. Okay? Firm, yeah. not tight. Secure, but not stressful. This no, but, but people think it's a part of it. It's going to last. I've even had a client. Tell me if you heard this. I've even had a client tell me that a braider told her it has to be tight because pulling helps the hair grow. Well, oh, I've heard that several times. You know what? If y'all want to put anybody telling you that, grab your purse and your key and leave. That is not okay. No. Pulling helps your hair, oh bro. Mm -mm. Only us. <laughs> like, what? And you yeah. over there in the seat like, oh, yeah, that must be true. <laughs> Meanwhile, you got those little white bulbs sticking out from ripping it all out. I know. No. no. Oh no. Mm -hmm. Yeah, y'all. Don't do it. I mean, and you know, to be fair, a lot, mm -hmm. a lot of people love just going to Harlem mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. no money and having two, three people work on their head at a time and getting out of there. But my girlfriend, she went there to get her hair braided. Mm -hmm. And she sent me a text saying that they were braiding her hair so tight, she saw into the future and the past. <laughs> I she had a conversation with her ancestors. I'm dead. <laughs> she was texting. She was like, I'm oh, my God. Dead. I, I that baby right now. Like, she was Listen, but sure. I've had clients text me in the chair telling me they're, she's like, Camilla, I'm at the verge of tears. I'm like, leave. Leave. Go. Get out. And she's like, I'm going to this event. And I need, I need it. And I'm like. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Somebody just said I had a braider say that to me. No, yes. it does. This is not. It's, I'm telling you, it's not. It's not true. It's not yeah, true. you can't do that. You can't do that. Uh oh, yeah. P. P said her that that mess too causes traction alopecia. Yes, it does. And permanent scarring. Like sometimes with the the hair loss, traction alopecia, it can grow back. Sometimes it's permanent. People are personally yeah. scarred for forever. Yeah. Like that's it. Yeah. yeah. So I mean, you know, you can go pay. I don't know. What is it? Maybe two hundred dollars. Get your hair. How much does it cost in Harlem? I think in Harlem, it's. I think it can be a hundred, eighty. And but they'll. It's a bargaining. They'll bargain. Which what, what you want to pay? Tell me what you want to pay. Tell me what you want to pay. What? <laughs> no. No. <laughs> But you know what? This is another thing I have an issue with. When you go sit down and get your hair braided like that, sometimes people have scalp issues. And if you mm -hmm. don't soak the hair, like I like to soak the hair in vinegar. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I see the chemicals come up. And oh, yes. Sitting right on that top. film. Oh, yes. Yeah. And some women who've been braiding their hair for a long time, they have bald spots, so they have irritation or inflamed scalp, and they don't know why, and it's because of those chemicals on their hair. Mm -hmm. So how do you do that? So I definitely do the apple cider vinegar technique. It was the service that I used to offer when I was taking appointments. Like it's, it's obviously an extra step. It doesn't affect everybody, but it affects a lot of women. Yeah. And so yeah. I, I realized that taking that extra step makes a difference. And it does, it's a, it's a tedious process, but it's not a long process because you soak it, you rinse it, repeat, soak it, rinse it, repeat, put a little maybe um, conditioner after to get the smell out and then let it air dry. So basically for me, what that meant was before an appointment, the day before I was preparing for the client. However, now there are at least two brands I know of that, that have um what is it hair that doesn't irritate so that's and one is um latched and hooked and the oh, other yeah. is spectra uh easy braid hair they also have hair that's not um 
um, what's the word I'm looking for? Ir irritating. Yeah, that, that word. <laughs> so, and, and so I've used both brands and the client, they were like, wow, this is such a different experience. But obviously if you know you have it, look up those two brands at least, or try to find a braider that, that does the service or you buy the hair and you do it. Cause it's something that you can do yourself. Like the cleaning part of it. Mm -hmm. The cleaning Everybody part. This time, Dan, we're talking about actually cleaning the hair before you put it on, mm -hmm. your hair so you don't have a scalp. Uh, you know, you so see, you couldn't find the word either. <laughs> right. I'm like, I'm looking at, I'm visualizing. So, what, what do you put on the scalp? I found um, it was this one. It's like a like a some droplets like a tea tree oil mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oil. like what's good to put on the scalp when it becomes inflamed like that so i definitely recommend tea tree and mm -hmm. peppermint because they're both uh anti-inflammatory antibacterial um it, again it doesn't have to be complicated i think when it comes to treating and and first the first step is take it out that's the first step like if it's really irritated take it out like do not compromise the health of your hair for a style that is temporary. It's just not worth it. I don't care what you pay. But mm -hmm. however, if it's just a tingly that you start to feel and want to try to pre and treat it after it's installed, but you think like, well, I'm starting to feel a little funny, definitely an apple cider vinegar rinse um, and dilute it in water, of course, and just do it, get, put in a spray bottle, spray. Oh, that's good. Yeah. yeah and just try to get in between. And you really have to kind of sit with it and see if this is going to help because sometimes these things move rapidly. And then next thing you know, you have a whole flare up and a whole yes. issue. I told I a client see. that. Mm -hmm, I told a client to try that. And she, within like 30 minutes, told me she was feeling the difference. Oh, so okay. it's something that you can sit with and kind of see. But sometimes it's it's quick. So you have to move quick. And at the last resort, take it out. Take it mm -hmm. out. Take it out. Mm -hmm. Do we have a shirt? Take it out. I don't know. take it out. <laughs> <laughs> so, what's the difference between knotless braids and just the regular knotted braid? Other than the look, it is beautiful. Other than the look, so um, okay. So, traditional box braids, obviously, the install is with the hair wrapped around the base of the natural hair, right? Okay. And so, it creates this little knot. And that's where the tension comes from. That's where grease, oil, dirt, gel mm -hmm. can hide under that little knot. Because it's lit, like, say the knot is a fist, which sometimes it looks like <laughs> things could get, you know, tucked under hair, buried, your fuzz, things like that. And so yeah. one, of, one of the main differences besides the actual knot is the fact that knotless lays flatter against mm -hmm. your head. So there's no way, there's no where for it to kind of nestle and stay. Um, another difference is the ability to style it right away. So one of the comments that most women experience when they have traditional braids is, oh, I can't wait to do a bun. <laughs> and they do a bun after like four weeks when they should be taking it, getting close to taking it out. But yeah. then they're like, I just got the bun. I could put another four weeks. And, then, and that's what also makes them leave it in longer. Cause they're like, well, they just loosened up. Now I can have fun. Whereas Knotless allows you to play right away. My most of, I would say, I would say 80% of my clients have left with a bun. Some of them want to let it hang and, you know, yeah. fling, on, fling on the world. But most people, they want that messy bun. And they're like, nope, put it up right away. Mm -hmm. And that's another um, beauty of it. So it lays you know what I found? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I found, because um, uh, one of my, Stylist, other stylist does the knotless on Issa on Issa. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. And I noticed it's easy on her edges. Yes. yes. Her edges are a whole lot better with the knotless braid. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. The edges is probably one of the best benefits as it pertains to health, right? Because mm -hmm. and the tightness in general, but especially around the hairline. Mind you. No two, listen, some knotless braids still hurt because it's not knotless braids. And clients are, I mean, stylists are calling their braids knotless 
um. when they're not because they're trying to jump on the wave. And so for them, knotless braids mean a smaller knot mm -hmm. or their install, it, it's, it's still, it's still painful. So you really have to be um, careful who is even doing your knotless braids because no two braids are created equal. Um, somebody's asking, should you take it out after four weeks? No, you can, I, like I said, for me, I tell clients six weeks. Um, six weeks is a good enough time frame, but more also more importantly, you also need a, a, a six week break. So however long you leaving it in, you right. have to also take a break in between because again, if it's not done correctly or if it's not knotless, when your hair starts to grow out and that synthetic hair is dangling and you're flipping it because you know you're cute and now you can style it, yeah. your hair is literally going with it every flip. And there goes your hairline. And yeah. it might not happen tonight. It might not happen tomorrow, but it's happening. And I think that's the problem with the hair loss from braids. Sometimes it, it's not immediate and people think I'm fine. But when you start looking back at your pictures, <laughs> that hairline just going closer and closer to the back of your mm -hmm. ear. <laughs> really got to be careful. But the edges for knotless to me is like one of the best benefits. Best, best, best benefits. Trapina says that she's been thirty, uh, uh, been alive thirty three years. I know about knowledge braids. Listen, a lot of people still don't know. It's not your fault because you know we go through trends, yep. and so you know Jane Jackson trend, you know poor Jessica Jessica. Those, that there was a knot there, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. those big braids. Those big braids they had knots, so. I think the knowledge braids are the way to go, especially when it comes to feeling lighter or your edges, you know, being protected. And it just looks so pretty. Mm -hmm. Go on YouTube and check out some of them. Christine. Yeah, I don't think it's a trend. I think yeah. it should be the standard, truthfully. I really think it should just be the standard and the other way just should just go away. <laughs> because at the end of the day, all the all the client wants is braids. You know, so why not do it in a healthy way? You know, mm -hmm. everybody and I'm and I'm going to I didn't, I didn't post it yet, but I'm going to soon start classes online to teach yeah. because it's about time. <laughs> That's great. Bria. Bria says, so when you see the white field, is that always your hair pulling out or is that something uh, sometimes shedding hair? No, your hair got pulled out. When you see that little white bulb, that and little bulb, it got pulled out from the root. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Yeah, sorry. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. <laughs> Take a moment out for the edges. Once you see the bulb, that's yeah. So, right. look, you know, I'm going to ask you, I don't know how much you can talk about this, but I just want to make, I just want to at least say, I don't know if y'all know, but Miss Hair and Hammer did some of the hair on the Beyonce. Oh, black Ooh. and I got a shout you out. And my other friend Nikki B, I got to have her on. Yes. Her. Oh my God, but I love Nikki. Y'all killed it, and all the other hair Thank styles. You. Oh, yes, you know, everybody pulled that. that was. And I just want to just shout you out. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I felt so proud watching it. I felt like, wow, with it, because I was all about the hair. I know she looked good. She had yes, yes. Dancing and stuff. But the but hair. That hair. Woo! The hair. And it was so, and it was so quick. And she just yeah. teases you. She's like, oh, hold this. Next out. Hold that. Next out. Hold that. It's like, whoa. Yeah. But that was, that was amazing to even be included in that, truthfully. That was so, so amazing to be, yeah. to be considered one of the best by one of the best like because her hairstylist neil is amazing you know the girl that called me for the opportunity amazing so you know it's like wow just to be part of it i was like okay 2020 yeah okay, 2020 it was cloudy with a little mix of sunshine okay yes, i'll take that i'll take that yes, yes, yes. thank you christina <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I pop in stuff every now and then too. We do have some questions. Okay. But I just want to have a real casual conversation. 
you know, because I feel like, okay, so look, mm -hmm. I don't know if you've ever heard me say that. And definitely, if you don't agree, please say so. Okay. I love to learn new things. Let me know. But I learned over time watching mm -hmm. women who constantly wear their hair braided back to back without taking breaks. Mm -hmm. The synthetic hair started to especially take the force. The synthetic hair cuts into the cuticle layer mm -hmm. of your natural hair when you don't hold it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, before you put mm -hmm. it on, hold it with a light leave in or something, but it, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and it braided it breaks the cuticle layer and it mm -hmm. makes it pull open. And when they pull open, it's harder for them to close. And so the porosity stays super low because the water is sitting there. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to, um, you know, encourage women to basically do more deep conditioning mm -hmm. with cream masks to help close the cuticle, mm -hmm. use argan oil, smooth it down, move in a downward motion. Mm -hmm. to Feel it and close it. Mm -hmm. uh, but do you have any tips about that, or or maybe another take on it, even? So I actually agree with you. What what I used to do is when I worked at a salon for this amount of time, <laughs> after the wash and blow dry, I would put um, like the tea tree and the peppermint within the scalp because there's a difference between oils for scalp and oils for the hair shaft. And the problem is, though, that so many women just hear oil and they put anything and they mix it in. And so it's doing more damage. And then they're like, my hair is dry and blah, blah, blah. Well, oil and water have never been friends. Like, they just, like, they cool. Like, you, over there, you over there, oil, and I'm over here, water. Like, we good. We don't got to be close, but we cool. We cool. They don't mix. But people, for some reason, think my hair is dry. Let me put oil. However, for braiding, I do agree back to the appointments. Once I did the scalp oil, I would take something light like an argan oil um, or a, a fatty oil then. And then just lightly. And it doesn't have to be doused. Like just lightly and evenly distributed. And even and even after that, I'll take your 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 comment a step further. I would then do a light medium blow dry to kind of warm it up and just really seal it in there. And the hair just feels so good. Mm -hmm. And it makes, those little things are why the $80 appointments with the Africans, nothing against the Africans. Listen, people got to eat. But that's why it's important to go to someone who actually is educated and is about hair health as opposed to just the yeah. money, the, 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 you know, the hustle of it. Yeah. Like, we all out here trying to make it, but it, the, the prior, you have to prioritize your hair. And and no little things like this that will make a difference because so many women are suffering. So I, I do agree with that. I do absolutely agree that something should be put on the hair. Mm -hmm. Maybe not by the client because clients OD. <laughs> Maybe by an educated stylist or a stylist that actually cares about what they're doing. And I and that leads me to like a quick one quick tip that I tell my clients or people in general. Quick tip. Stop going to people that don't like your hair. <laughs> How about that? That's the quick yeah. tip. Yeah. Stop going to people that see your hair and they're already like, oh, this today? Like, mm -hmm. stop. I don't care yeah. who it is. Dominican, pe anybody that doesn't like the hair coming out your scalp, say, thanks, but no thanks. Yeah. Because, because what pour, what goes into your hair is what you'll get out of it. And I'm big on energy, Felicia. You already know. And so I pour into my clients positivity and love. And I love natural hair, period. But I couldn't I couldn't do this if I didn't care about hair. Like, I wouldn't yeah. do it. And I don't think people should continue to pour, give their money to people who don't care. Because they'll miss out on things like this. So there are some questions. Um, let's get into, and I probably need to go up. But let's answer Victoria Walton's question first. How much of an issue is follicle inflammation an issue in traction alopecia? I'm not quite sure, Victoria, what you mean. I think you're asking what part of the follicle inflammation can play a part in traction alopecia? Or how much 
Does follicle inflammation play play in traction alopecia? Um, okay, so if that's the question, it can play a huge part because when you have follicle inflammation, the scalp is sore. And every time the hair grows, it also has a bump, like a, a, it grows with a bump. Mm -hmm. And sometimes um, that has to be treated. Sometimes the bumps have to be popped and released. Mm -hmm. have, yeah, I don't want to get all gross, y'all. Right, 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 but, right. Yeah, follicle inflammation can definitely cause you to lose hair. The hair can grow back. But if you don't get the follicle inflammation under control, it's just going back into a breeding ground of more trauma. So, yeah, that's um, And the other thing is to also pay attention, right? Because so mm -hmm. many women don't because they already associate the pain as part of it. And then they miss the moment where inflammation is a warning, right? Like yes. so, so it's like they miss that window to, to get treated, to see a derm, to take the braids out. Because they're just thinking, oh, this always happens when I get braids. Girl, it always yeah. happens. And it's always not a good thing. <laughs> so, and it doesn't happen to everybody. So you definitely have to see a dermatologist yeah. and, and right away. I'm not going to let that go too far. And it yeah. really cause a lot, a lot of problems for them mm -hmm. later. Uh, okay, so. Uh, hello, Kia. What products are safe to braid with? I see edge control and shine and jam being used all the time. <laughs> shine and jam. So here's the thing. Tell us. Here's the thing. So when you are getting braids, right, your hair should be in a clean state. That's first. Your hair should be clean. There is there is preparation before the braid. Let's start there. So having your hair start in a clean state. How your hair starts is how your hair will kind of end. Let, let's assume the person maintains their hair. Be mm -hmm. And because they maintain their hair, they wash their hair before they get braids. When the stylist comes now and applies heavy use of shine and jam specifically, edge control will come back to shine and jam is wet. It is greasy and it is sticky. And I'm saying wet. It's just meaning like the, the texture of it because your hair reverts when you use shine and jam. And so those three things used in a, I won't say a slight proportion because remember everybody thinks laying down is that's what you have to get. The flatness, the product will make your hair flat. But shine and jam, when it dries, it dries soft. And so now you have something in your clean head that will attract dirt, dust, particles, everything else. And now, and then if you don't wash it, maintain it, clean your scalp, now you have an even bigger issue. And so your, your braids are going to age way before time. Your, your age won't, your braids won't um, even have time to age naturally or, or nicely. And so the products that are safe to braid with are, in my opinion, um, light edge controls, things that are lighter, not something that will revert your hair back to normal. And, and safe, I don't know if safe is the word that I would use. Um, I would just say better. Better for, you have any particular better for the outcome. Better for the outcome. You, can you speak on any brands that you like? or Brands I like. I mean, I don't. I don't really want to. Okay, but, no, no, no. but I can Let's give one. I can give one. For example, um, actually, oh, I thought I had it. Um, for example, let's say you know the um, the Shine Boost. They have all the colors. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. So to me, that that's an edge control gel. I don't know what they call it, but it's lighter. Like, I don't know if that's making sense. Like, Shine and Jam is very sticky and gooey. That edge boost thing is a lot lighter and less can go further. Whereas to me, people that the people that use Shine and Jam, they use a lot because it doesn't do the trick. And so the use of edge control to me is literally just to reinforce what a good blow dry already did. Okay. And that's why the preparation before the braid is important. It's not necessarily... To, do, to to recreate, like, you know, like, I don't, I don't know if I'm making sense. 
But the point yeah, is, I don't like shine and jam, and I don't think stylish should use it for, for okay. breath. That's the conclusion. Yeah. Okay, no problem. <laughs> um, I there are a few that I like and I use, but one of the ones that I think is really good and safe is Main Choice makes one that protects mm -hmm. your edges. It's a pomade, and it's for the protection of the edges. So okay. I think it's got like biotin and some other things in it just to keep the edges healthy. Okay. But, so there is this stuff called Edge Entity that you can find online. And they're also on Instagram. Edge Entity is pretty good. It's a cream, but mm -hmm. it really does melt into the edge as well. And I found that if the hairline is thinning um, mm -hmm. from a protective style and you go and use some of the Edge Entity, and it, it works pretty fast. Mm -hmm. I give it like two months, three months before you feel really confident about it. But you'll start to see results because your edges get stronger. Okay. Entity. Never heard of it. So, yeah, there's a lot now on the market, a lot of oils for hair growth and things like that. Jamaican black Jamaican castor oil is a very good organic way to keep your edges strong. It'll fertilize your, your edges pretty good. Um, let's see. What is our next question? Let's see what Denise is saying. Hello, ladies. Hi, Best Denise. Our ever. Thank you. Hey. And I've been installing my own braids and twists since 2017. Congratulations. Nice. Very pretty, but now my hair in the center top crown is broken off. I have a mm. full of hair all around. Okay. So, what I like to use Denise is um pro pro protect wait now I'm the name Profective growth <laughs> renew. growth renewed by Profective. I'm gonna put it in the notes. And it's a purple and silver um, box that you want to look for. It's the moisture serum growth renew mm. I hope I'm spelling this right. I mean not y'all I'm doing my best. <laughs> but mm -hmm. the moisture serum, like growth renew, will bring that top part back. It's for it's, it's a it's a scalp treatment or yeah. for the skin? Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, the first thing is if it's breaking off, I hope you're trimming it. Like, you know, I hope you're taking the broken the, the broken pieces and still treat like when because you know sometimes stylists they'll give you a trim and they'll ignore the whole <laughs> that whole middle part. So I hope you're getting a trim that also complements what's happening in your hair and kind of well, in the meantime. It like she's saying the center top crown is broken, but she has a hair full of hair all around it. So she's not going to be able to cut that hair down or that. She's using it to hide. So she, so if her hair is this long at the top, uh -huh. if it broke off, she got to bring it back. And, I, and growth new is one of the things that I've seen work. I would say I've 10 times, I've seen it work seven. Mm, okay. Yeah. Uh, but if you have alopecia that's genetic, it doesn't. Right. It's not going right. to do it. But if you have broken hair or broken edges, it mm -hmm. definitely does work. It's like a leave-in conditioner. Mm -hmm. extra something to help the hair like get its wings back it. and start to grow. Mm -hmm. but, um. Let's see. So, okay, and then we have one pimp, pimp of afro. You know one pimp it? afro. Okay. Okay, okay pimp. <laughs> okay, also, I prep the synthetic hair with apple cider vinegar, shampoo, and conditioner. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's great. Yep. That was good. It makes um, a difference. It makes a difference. And Christina did ask us about edge control, but we, we basically kind of covered it. Okay. No, 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 because the edge boost, like edge boost. Yeah, if somebody put it in the notes here, the edge boost. Do you think that growth oils really work? You know what? Sometimes. <laughs> you know what it is? It's the routine. It's yeah. not the, the, the oil. It's how many times you're using it. you got to use it. you got to use it. Because so just the thing, like with the Jamaican castor oil, people are like, put it on and then they'll forget for a week. Then it puts mm -hmm. some in it and then they go, I don't know if it's working. I'm like, you got to. But it also, like for me, I think this is where we would disagree. Like for me, the oils, 
depending I don't know. I don't know, Felicia, because and because there's nothing to, to support that, because I've had this conversation before, even with clients. And I'm like, eh. I, I don't know enough to know that some of these growth oils or growth oils are more of like a, a gimmick or a, a way to get people to just spend their money. So, oh. for example, there's a brand that has a attention release oil that implies that tension is part of the process and this release oil is going to create a magical way to take it out no <laughs> tension is tension like a like oil good. can't stop tension and you're reinforcing the fact that braids should hurt when they go in so i, I sometimes mm. i think these growth oils is more of a gimmick or when people say oh my god braids grow my hair no your hair grows braids are just in it Braids yeah. don't grow hair. Your mm -hmm. hair is growing right now, depending on what stage of the growth cycle it's in. Your hair is growing and you just happen to have braids. Yes. So I don't know that personally. For me, I'm like eh, on growth oils. I I, yeah. I don't know. So I found out because so what I used to do, I used to make these body oil scrubs. Uh -huh. I had to take a bunch of classes about different oils, um, mm -hmm. essential oils. Um, holistic oils, organic mm -hmm. versus natural, mm -hmm. and what they do for the body and the hair. Uh -huh. So I found that there are a lot of them that do help to rebuild the keratin or do help to like um, fertilize the follicle. Okay. And it's the oil, not the stimulation. It's the actual it's oil. The oil. Yeah. But there's not a lot, but there are a few. And okay. if you combine them together, they do work on some people, not everybody. Okay. Okay. Now, now, for sure, I've heard more than a thousand times, a thousand hundred times, that uh, Black Jamaican castor oil works. Mm -hmm. I've heard that several times. I've never used it to know, mm -hmm. but I've had clients, because I used to be like, you're like, I don't know about that. But then, <laughs> then I'll see the same person, and over time, because they go on YouTube, and they uh -huh. see, like, use this, use this, so they start using it. And they come out, oh, wow, your hair is funny. It's like, yeah, I've been using it. Like you're making casserole. Now, I've known this person for three years and they have slow growth. Then they start mm. using casserole and it pumps the hair up and hair. Okay. So maybe it's their chemistry along with the oil that's making it happen, which is to your point, to make sense. It's, it's, Maybe your hair will grow you need the right stuff. To yeah, Maybe yeah. Cancer yeah. oil is part of that. I, I don't know, you know. So yeah, that's Nadine. Where you see this is a good conversation because <laughs> yeah. I'm like I don't know, and Felicia has her own personal experience. So huh. yeah, so Thank that's you. that on that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, can you repeat for Ray Bell? Oh, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um uh latched and hook, which is okay. a black owned mm -hmm. company, Bla latched yeah. and hook. Mm -hmm. And E Z, the letter E and the letter Z, braiding hair by I think it's by Spectra, S P E C T R A. Okay. There's a, actually a new brand that I saw in the beauty supply that said non-irritating, but it was I saw it in passing and I don't remember. But those two for sure have a uh, non non irritating hair. Okay. Um Okay. And then you know, we have a few people on here saying they love oils. Yeah, listen. Do what works. But for oh, me, I uh -huh. Nora, what you said about massaging. Right. You, right, you, Nora, that's what I'm saying. Is it the stimulation? Is it the oil or is it the fact that the person stopped doing whatever it was that caused it. And is it just time? Is it a combination? Is it like, you know, we don't know the math, but let me see the scrap paper. What you've been doing. <laughs> I need the scrap paper. Yeah. Cause I'm, 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 I'm a big skeptic when it comes to like hair growth stuff. And somebody put a meme up that said, if you can find it, for twenty dollars, and your hair is supposed to grow in two days. Uh, uh sis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and there, do you know? Um, uh, I love to do the brand. Yes. I love do. She had a post that said, "Do you really think if something could grow your hair, 
they would offer it to you for twenty five dollars. Yes. And I was like, exactly. Like, because even role game costs a grip. Listen, but the other thing is, I think people are so worried about growth and not worried about health. People in general, not anybody yeah. here specifically, but and to me, it's like I think people forget hair growth is also genetic. Genetic. Yeah. Genetics. And and that's why somebody I think um I'm gonna go back to the, uh, Neil in a minute, but Carolita. What is the growth cycle? That is a good question because everybody is on a different cycle. And they try to tell us that we get what happening every month. That's not true. I would have hair down on my ankle. And, but, and is it true? I think Felicia, correct me if I'm wrong, that your hair, different parts of your hair can be at different stages. Like your hair is not all growing at the same time because it's the antigen the catagen and the telogen phases the three Ooh. growth phases you know i got it right, here. Here. It's right at the front it's right at the front <laughs> so it's basically the growth the rest the shed it's very simple and i talk about it in my ebook <laughs> we don't talk about this ebook because we got like nine minutes left and this conversation has been so good let me go back yes. to the real quick Oh yes, right. hair okay. vitamins a waste is a multivitamin again. You see, I'm gonna leave that for you, Felicia. I don't know. No, I don't want to say nothing about that. <laughs> okay, so. that's for you. She, is she, the Felicia got cut off. Felicia, this are is hair what? vitamins a waste? It says Felicia. Okay, so this is a thing, you know. Um, whenever people ask me about hair vitamins, I often say, "What is your current diet, and how much water do you drink?" And are you taking supplements already? Because putting hair in the front of vitamins is a way to sell it. But if you don't take a vitamin, take a vitamin. Take a supplement for everything, not just the hair, the whole body. People run around here with corona, man. So you can't target target vitamin take in that. Yeah, you got to do everything. Just take the yes. Take yourself. Like, mm -hmm. and I take all my supplements in liquid form. It's easier for me. I put mm -hmm. my little droplets in. I do selenium, potassium, zinc, magnesium, iron, iodine, uh, vitamin C. And I do it in liquid. It's just mm -hmm. easier. I orange juice. I drink it up. I'm done. Mm -hmm. It does grow my hair. Just mm -hmm. that. Be but because you're in harmony. Your body is in harmony. Mm -hmm. It's harmony. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's so, the difference. If you're going to fool with a hair vitamin, specific, what's the word? Specifically? Specific. <laughs> Just know that you might turn out, they might be chasing you down the street because now you've got hair growing out everywhere. Like, it's not just going to grow here. It's going to grow here. It's going to grow here. Yeah. Gonna grow here. Yeah. <laughs> you're going to grow hair. That's if you're taking it the way they suggest. Yes, the hair vitamins need a lot of water, and people don't do that part. They end up having headaches and different things. But if you do a hair vitamin, get a hair gummy. Everybody likes mm. do a hair gummy. It's easier. Boom, boom. All right. So, talk to us about the book real quick. Oh my gosh. Because we my got so many baby. other questions, and I don't want to like. Okay, okay. So real quick, I really want to say Beyond the Braids is my first baby. Do you it's, have it by you? No, it's digital. No, it's digital. So That's as soon as you best. buy it, it's on your phone. You can read it. You don't got to wait. If you buy PayPal, I have to send it to you. But if you buy a credit card, you get it right away. But Beyond the Braids, what you don't know might be hurting you, is literally the what, when, and how of hair and scalp maintenance with protective styles. That's what it is in short. But along the way, it's literally me kind of talking to you. Because what I did is like encapsulate my consultations into an ebook because I was noticing that I was repeating myself and saying certain things, including mm -hmm. that your hair is beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, and so I'm really walking with the reader along the journey of self-love while we're talking about hair because I want people to be excited. I want people to have braids, but I want them to yeah. understand that the education has to be a part of the equation on their part. Like everything is not the stylist's 
fault and everything is not their fault. And so Beyond the Braids, I wrote during quarantine. Don't mind the fact that I broke, cracked my phone. <laughs> Yay, that's my baby. Is, this Beyond is the it, brain. Uh, And you can get it at Miss Hair and Humor. Yes, I am. MSHairandHumor.com. Yes, Felicia. Yeah. Beyond the Braids. So, so that's my baby. Go check it out because she's incredible. And also, check out that Black is King. Like, oh my but when you go God. on your page, if you go to Instagram at Miss Hair and Humor, you will see some of the hairstyles. I put up, yeah, and on. somebody created a montage of beginning to end all the styles that were in it. I love it. That they should check out. That's dope. I'm great so team. Was a great team. Thank you. Listen, let me see. Do we try to take one more question? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do we have time? We got what four minutes? Yep. Um, Christina, I hear you. Um, give me give me a, a an email at ask. Felicia Moore, M O R E. Ask Felicia Moore, M O R E, at gmail.com uh, in terms of those liquid vitamins you want to know about. Mm -hmm. Okay. I What's she saying? I would love to keep my hair out 24 7 without having to braid it, but I find that twisting it every night and combing it out every morning. Maybe too much manipulation and calls breakage. Any advice? Mm. Hmm. Mm. She wants to keep her hair out twenty four seven. That's that. That's part of. I think we should unpack that. <laughs> keep there. I think everything has to be done in moderation, including leaving your hair out. Um. Too much manipulation and cause breakage. Um, wow, there's so many things to talk about here. I know. So what I'm going to suggest, just because I know we're going to run out of time, Vina, uh -huh. please send me a message at askfeliciamore at mm -hmm. gmail.com or go to felicialeatherwood.com and schedule a private consultation mm -hmm. so that we can work this out. I want to see this to you with your hair uh, texture is and with products yes. you have so I can help you um, figure it out if you're trying to wear it out. Just so we can have real, real, realistic expectations. Yes. That's so my advice saying. right now is moderation. Everything in moderation. <laughs> oh, P has got some nice things to say here. Thank you, P. Being patient and loving with myself has been key. Yes, the goal is healthy hair. That is the goal. Harmony. Yes. That's Thank you, P. I appreciate that. Uh, somebody wants to know your wall color. Benita wants to know your wall color. Uh, <laughs> I've got my friends. What color is this? Do you know? It looks like tangerine. It's a burnt orange tangerine. Isn't it nice? <laughs> and the chair. Look. Oh, gorgeous. Yes. In this fireplace. It's gorgeous. Harmony. Harmony. Yeah. I love it. <laughs> I love it. That's um, so funny. Oh. Look what um, Ama says. Hmm. We need a directory of health-oriented health braids. Health so, okay. So, like I said, when I'm dropping my class, that's that's one of my goals is to, I'm creating a page called, well, another, a separate account called Knotless Nation. And Knotless Nation, that's one of my goals is to have a network of women across the country who you know, practice safe practices as far as not less braiding and things like that, because I do realize there's a need for that. And people, people in other states will ask me, do you know somebody in Oregon? I'm like, no, I don't. I'm in Brooklyn. I don't know anybody. In Oregon. Like, like you said, Oregon. You need anybody? You know anybody in Utah? I'm like, no, I don't know. But so, Anna, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, a, I'm, it's right here. You got her. I'm, I'm thinking okay. about it. Okay, well, Felicia, this was cute. This was definitely yeah. keeping it cute. This is cute. I'm I love so this, grateful. and I love you, and I appreciate you for inviting me. Thank you. And I'm I, I wish I had my afro because I would be like, <laughs> I was on Felicia. Oh, yeah, I was yeah. on Felicia show. <laughs> that afro. I love this, and I love the afro. This is good for now with my with my one arm. I got to yeah. do physical therapy today. Thank oh, you so good. much. Yeah. Thank you. And thank all of you 
who have hung out with us today. Yes. I know you're all over the world. Um, we have some people from Germany in here and Africa and New York. Yes. Oh my and God. I am super grateful. And so you usually will find me between StreamYard, which is Facebook Live, uh -huh. YouTube Live, or Zoom every Saturday at one o'clock. Keeping it cute. Time <laughs> and four o'clock Eastern time. So if y'all need anything, any help, come see me, FeliciaLeatherwood.com. I'm around. Go see Miss Hair and Humor. Please, and support Beyond the Braids. Support the Braids. Support yes. the braids. One the quick question I have for you, Felicia. Yeah. Does this save? Can I post this to my my YouTube? Mm -hmm. This saves? Yes. Because I, I know my people will get a lot out of this. This is good, oh, Felicia. This thank good. you. I have fun. Y'all are awesome. And we're about to get up out of here. Happy Saturday. Happy um, Saturday, everybody. Get cute while quarantine with Felicia Leatherwood and Miss Hand Humor today. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Bye, y'all. You're awesome. Have a good day.